Hi, today we're not here to talk about my first marathon. No, we are here to talk about how you can change the color of anything, like this t-shirt here, like that, this t-shirt, or anything in the scene really. But to show you that, let's go into DaVinci Resolve. And here we are into DaVinci Resolve. My timeline is already set, I've got my clip. Before we get started, let's take a moment to zoom into this beautiful face of mine. Winner. <laughs> Okay, so I've identified three key moments. The first one here, when I'm snapping my finger. The second one here, when I'm changing the color of my shirt. And then the third one here, when I change a little bit of everything. To mark this moment, I can either press M on my keyboard or use the marker element. Now let's move into the color wheel. Yours might be slightly different than mine. It's simply because I've applied a color grading already. If I disable it, as we can see, it looks completely different. So let's put it back. Let's get started and simply right click, add a node, add serial. With this, we will have a node from which we can start working on. So before making any kind of change, we need to realize that I want that change to be not at all time. I want it at a specific moment in time. For that, I will need keyframing. To turn them on, simply enable them on the right here. If you don't have them and yours looks like those frames here, simply change, you know, maybe on the vector scope or something else. Simply click on the keyframe one and then you will have them there. You will have one entry per node. As we can see, I've got a second node here that match correct to two. From here, we can now get started and we will start by adding a first keyframe. So right click, add a static keyframe. We'll talk about dynamic keyframe later. But now that we've got that keyframe, we can turn things on. So let's activate them. Let's click on the little diamond here. That's probably a better way, but I haven't found one. Let's move one keyframe to the right. And now if you make any change, it will contrast with the previous frame. And that's exactly what you want, like any keyframe. So if I move my curve, we can see that everything is changing. That's exactly what's happening here. However, I only want the t-shirt. So let's go into the qualifier, that little uh, eye drop thing. And then let's select the picture. We'll make sure that we select the right thing. So with that, let's go straight away and select the t-shirt. If I move it around and draw kind of an L shape, it really drive it. As we can see on the right, on the note, that's where it's being displayed. It's being reflected here. If I want to just see what I'm selecting in big, let's turn the highlight on with that little icon here at the top. And now we can see that I've got everything as I want to. If I try to get a little bit more precise, I can play around, but just clicking around won't cut it. If I want to add, let's come at the bottom, let's add the add on the qualifier. And now I can do it again, make sure I'm selecting everything that I want, no more, no less. Here I've got a little bit of arm left, a little bit around the round neck, so I'll play around and here I know I just need to adjust the saturation. It's a little bit too much on the gray side. So let's tweak it a bit and then I can use the clean white, clean black. If you ask me what it is exactly, I'm not entirely sure. Clean black seems to make the edges a little bit more blur and kind of go back inside and the clean white kind of does the opposite. But by playing around, I'm getting something here which I'm pretty happy with. As we can see, it's pretty much all there. The pink doesn't really work with the orange reflection, but if I'm playing and maybe I find it here a nice green, uh, it works just fine. If I decide to adjust things a little bit, uh, we should get there quite easily. So now I've made my change and if I play, we will see that it's exactly what we wanted before the keyframe as usual. After the keyframe, a qualify applies and I'm green with the t-shirt. And just like that, my first effect is done. So now let's move to the second one. If you think that you got it, just need to add a serial, make some change and done. Stay with me because that's not the right way to do it. As we can see here, that note still keep the input of the previous one. My t-shirt is still green and that's not what I want. So instead of a serial, we're gonna add a parallel note. That simply means that the previous feed will be split in two. We'll apply two different correction with different keyframes and he will be able to change. As we can see, if I make a change here, it applies on everything on top of the previous one, but those selections are individual. So. I'm going to disable my keyframe, move to character three, which is my node three. And here we'll be able to do exactly the same thing, this time using dynamic keyframe. The main difference between static and dynamic is static is all in one go, dynamic will be progressive. So let's find the moment where I want the second one, add another dynamic keyframe. I can see the icon is slightly different. We've got this kind of fading away. And that's really what I want with that variation across the board. So now that I've got my two keyframe, let's do the same thing. Let's bring a qualifier, this time on the purple of the t-shirt. As before, we've got the highlight, so let's turn that on. We can see I've got a bit too much shadow, so let's play around with the saturation. Uh, that's roughly where it is. Clean white, clean black. I've played around a little bit, not really easy to find it, but after a bit of tweaking around, I've got a result that I'm happy with. 
And now if I change the curve, it's just my T-shirt moving. So that's absolutely perfect. Another way, rather than the curve, I can use the offset wheel as I'm doing here. And we can see that by pushing those, we can really shift things around. Which method is best? That's really up to you. That's how we want. But as I'm playing it here, we realize that something's wrong. That transition is progressive. And that is not what we want. We want the color change to be progressive, but not the qualifier to be progressive. So let's make sure we deactivate it, disable uh, those keyframe. And from here, we should be in a way better position. Now, because I'm doing this as I'm going and I didn't realize I wasn't in the right keyframe, my qualifier was wrong. So let's do it all over again, making sure that this time the qualifier is not selected. And if we play it, we will see that this time the transition is progressive. As I'm slowly going through, I'm going from purple to blue, objective achieved. Perfect. So there we go. We've got two of them, they merge back, they have different selections starting from the same source with different effects so we can get the t-shirt change and then the color of the shirt independently. So let's make sure that those qualifiers don't get selected. Otherwise, like me when I prepped, we'll do this a couple of times. Okay, so now I've added another serial note. I could have done another parallel one to change just one thing but I want to affect everything at once in that third point on the scene, so serial is just what I need. It's node number five, we've got number five. We've been code a couple of times with selecting everything, so let me do it the other way around. Let's select nothing but the color correction. And here we can go and add some keyframing. So let's add a first keyframe when we want the effect to start, another keyframe when I want everything to come back to normal, and then something in between to add the dynamic, or the other way around, it isn't really important. Once I've got my three keyframe, let's select the one I want, adjust my settings, have the right qualifier eventually, but as we can see, everything changed all the way to my point and then back to normal. So that really gives us uh, different options to address things. Okay, so by now you should be able to follow what I'm doing. I did an extra dynamic point here just to make sure that I can reset the t-shirt in the first place to make sure that at the very, very end, we're back to a starting point. So here we go t-shirt change, colors, everything done, and that's it really. Nothing more, nothing less. If you're wondering how to change a green screen, I've got a video here. Make sure to go and check it out. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.